<coughs> so good morning everyone my name is Lalit Soni and I welcome you all in this live session by Drishti IAS as usual we will be discussing Indian Express of the day there are certain four five news articles which are important from your examination point of view we will be discussing that so when we are talking about this front page here we have talked about this solar eclipse yesterday so if you have not watched it please go and watch it okay and then there is this article related to uh, this Karnataka plea which is the Karnataka state has gone to Supreme Court against center. So that is one thing which we will discuss or we will give a passing reference to it because there is one political angle or when we are talking about this center state relations you know that there is always a tussle going on between center and states and ultimately they go to Supreme Court and in this particular case Supreme Court has said that uh, center and uh, state should not contest with each other okay there should be a feeling of uh, cooperation so let's see we'll talk about that particular article and other than that we'll talk about this unauthorized fx platforms these are basically your forex platforms there are certain platforms which are authorized to deal in forex but there are certain which has uh, come up recently these are unauthorized platform so they are trying to go for uh, they are trying to induce these uh, customers and ultimately go for some kind of fraud okay then second thing is a dual emergence of cicadas okay so cicadas is a particular type of species okay we will talk about that so uh, it has a periodical cycle okay so basically it will come uh, every year but the thing is a bit recently they have come up at a from the two places in usa so we will be talking about that these cicadas are quite uh, you know beneficial for the uh, soil okay so we'll talk about that then the porihesia nuclear power plant okay so this Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is in Ukraine and you know that recently because of the this war situation going on there so there was some attack over there and because of which we will discuss that how this particular attack has impacted the working of the plant or how it can pose a potential threat okay then we can talk about US China trade fight 2.0 you know that in the Trump regime, they have gone for the trade war. When we are talking about US and China, there has always been this tussle. But recently, uh, they have started this again a trade war like situation, or you can say trade fight. Okay, so we'll be talking about that particular thing and what is this about? Earlier, when we are talking about uh, this Trump regime in 2016-17, at that point of time, what happens that that war was basically against the steel. Okay, the cheap steel which was being exported by China to USA. Okay, right now when we will be talking about this 5 2.0, we are talking about the emerging technologies, uh, solar uh, panels, electrical vehicles, etc. Okay, so we will be talking about that. Then for your own read, there will be two articles and then around the world we will see some news and for your practice there will be a question in the end. Okay, so let us start our session with the practice uh, question which was given to you in the previous lecture. Okay, so the question was. The word Satpula has been in news recently. What does it mean? This Satpula, okay. Now, seven towers, seven palaces, seven arches, and seven gardens. When we are talking about this Satpula, or there was this Satpula bridge, okay, which was in news recently. This bridge is basically in Delhi, or you can say in the vicinity of Delhi. You must have heard about this Mehroli area and there are various monuments in Mehroli. So, please remember that we have gone through some 15 to 20 articles related to Mehroli and the nearby sites. So, please remember that that all these articles are from Indian Express. So, you can say that these are all from the news and there are high chances that UPSC might go for one of them. Okay. So, when we are talking about this Satpula, Satpula means 7. Here you can say this Sat means 7 and then there is this Pula or you can say Arches. So basically Satpula means that 7 arches. Option C would be your right answer. Now let us see question num uh, sorry article number 1 of the day which is related to your front page. Okay. So Karnataka pleas on drought assistance. Supreme Court says that let there not be a center state contest states coming to the court. Okay. So basically what happened in the recent case that Karnataka has approached the Supreme Court saying that the funds has not been released from the national disaster relief fund okay so there is this national disaster response fund okay for the drought management and recently karnataka is witnessing a water scarce situation and from which they are actually uh, asking for some fund from the center and that particular fund has not been released okay so let's see Supreme Court on Monday called on the states and the central governments to refrain from a contest and noted that the various state governments were approaching the court to seek 
a relief against the center in matter related to dispersal of funds okay so here you can see first is karnataka then similar instances has been seen in uh, kerala in tamil nadu as well okay so ultimately supreme court has observed that many of these people are coming to court again 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 these states are coming uh, these states are coming to the court again and again okay now this when we are talking about this particular fund that is national disaster response fund that would be important for your prelims please go ahead and uh, you know read about this particular fund who is the chairperson of the fund what is the composition of the fund okay when it was started what is the main objective of the fund this, this is your homework now okay so that is one thing the karnataka government has accused the center of not providing financial assistance for the drought management the rules required that the center to take a final decision on providing ndrf assistance within a month of receiving the interministerial center team report okay so basically what has happened that once you get this report or once you uh, you know apply uh, these uh, state applies for it and then there is this committee or you can say central team that is interministerial central team they come up with a report within the one month of that center has to give their final decision okay now earlier tamil nadu government has also approached the supreme court saying that center was not releasing funds for the disaster management then kerala government too has placed a plea accusing the center of curtailing the borrowing limits when we are talking about the borrowing limits state can borrow but up to a certain limit okay if there is already an outstanding uh, you can say loan then before going for any further borrowing uh, center has to take uh, state has to take permission from the center okay now here you can see article 293 Article 293 of the Constitution vests a, vests a state with the enforceable right to raise borrowing from the union government or other sources. Okay, so they are saying that uh, there is this article that is 293, which says that a uh, state can go for borrowing from the union or from the other sources. Okay, Supreme Court has said that adding if yes, to what extent such right can be regulated by the union government? Okay, so now the thing is. here the question is that now state has this right under 293 now what is the question is that to what extent an state can go to borrow certain things okay when we are talking about central government central government's permission is required in certain cases okay so here this question is that if yes the if there is a right uh, like this then what is the extent of such right, right or what is the extent of union's power over the states okay because such things are basically affecting the federal system or you can say federalism and ultimately as i told you there is always a tussle going on between center and the states okay since article 293 dealing with the borrowing power of the states of the constitution has not uh, been so far the subject of any authoritative interpretation by the court in our consideration uh, considered opinion the aforesaid question uh, squarely fall within the ambit of article 145 3 of the constitution okay so basically now they are saying that article 293 has not been contested earlier so this is the first time supreme court will be going for an interpretation of article 293 so they have uh, taken it under the article 1453 now when we are talking about this article 1453 this is actually related to the rules and the proceeding of the supreme court okay so please remember these two articles that uh, one is your article 293 which is related to your you can say borrowing by the states then there is this article 145 clause 3 which is related to article 145 when we are talking about this is related to the rules and procedures of the supreme court and there is this added clause in that okay now this is what uh, this article was all about you have to remember these two articles here okay and then you have to uh, read about this national disaster relief fund okay so i hope these things is clear now we can move forward with the next article which is related to your unauthorized fx platforms okay so when we are talking about this fx platforms these are the platforms which are dealing with in the forex reserve okay or the foreign currencies okay or you can say interchanging the currencies okay now when we are talking about this unauthorized there are certain entities which are authorized by the state and then there are certain unauthorized entities which has recently developed and uh, you must have seen these advertisements okay hold on so you must have seen this uh, advertisements wherein uh, there are various third parties they are offering you some kind of incentive okay they are trying to uh, induce the customer so that they can fall into their trap now these entities out of which certain are authorized but certain can be unauthorized as well because uh, 
since the customer is not aware about the certain things that is why they can be a victim of that particular trap so when we are talking this unauthorized forex trading platforms they operate outside the regulatory framework okay established by the financial authorities so they are not regulated unregulated unchecked okay so if something happened then you cannot do anything about it because they are not in the you can say uh, roles of the government okay now let's see what this particular thing is talking about RBI governor has said that there are concern over unauthorized forex trading platforms and asked banks to maintain vig vigil against such uh, entities okay now this is a logical thing that if they are unregulated unauthorized there will be a concern then the regular or the regulator has been uh, cautioning the banks and the public against such forex trading platforms okay they are cautioning you against this forex trading platforms this is also obvious in 2018 they have come up with a framework that is called electronic trading platforms or you can say framework for authorization of these uh, uh, etps etps are basically electronic trading platforms now there are certain which are authorized and in 2018 they have come up with a framework to authorize these entities okay now framework for authorization of the electric trading platforms etps for financial markets instruments regulated by the electronic trading platforms are electronic systems so basically when we are talking about these etps there are they are electronic systems that recognize the stock exchange on which transactions are eligible instruments such as uh, securities up, uh, other than that your money market instruments etc so basically when we are talking about these etps these are electronic platforms or you can say these are some kind of applications or websites etc and they are actually working in this particular money markets or you can say your stock exchanges etc okay in 2022 there was this advertisements okay related to these unauthorized etps so basically what is happening like uh, there are ott platforms okay there are social media platforms now on these social medias on these otts these applications or etps are basically going for the advertisements okay and they are giving you some kind of incentives these in incentives can be disproportionate okay and since these are disp disproportionate or they are showing you a larger uh, revenues or returns so basically there are chances that few people who are not very well aware with such such things they might fall into trap of it okay so ultimately these things started happening in 2022 it was not uh, you know noted by the rbi that certain things uh, like that are happening okay misleading advertisement of unauthorized etps offering forex trading facilities to indian resident including on social media platforms search engines over the top platforms okay such etps are uh, actually engaging agents who are basically personally uh, contacting the gullible people or those people who are kind of vulnerable and ultimately they are you know extracting uh, things out of them here you can see who personally contact the gullible people to undertake forex trading investment schemes enticing them with a promises of disproportionate uh, and uh, uh, exuberant returns so basically what is happening is that they are promising you more returns with respect to the other authorized etps and that is how they fall into the trap of it okay now because of which there are some frauds which has been committed by these etps and uh, this uh, portals or there are certain website etc okay so that is why now they have come up with this particular caution or they have said that banks should go for the more vigilance okay now issuing updating alert list what rbi is doing is rbi is going for an alert list okay this alert list is there under which they are coming up with the name of certain uh, you know atp platforms which they are saying that these are unauthorized you are not supposed to deal with them so they have recently added 19 uh, platforms in that total number of such platforms is nearly 75 now okay now why is that particular thing is a matter because when we are talking about the returns or you can say uh, pricing of the forest market so there is a gap in the when we are uh, talking about the larger customer and then a smaller customer okay a person like you and me who is going to buy a market or money market instrument then there will be a pricing which will be high and when we are talking about a big uh, you know investor or when we are talking about a big uh, mnc sector if they are buying a uh, you know uh, uh, some money market instrument then the pricing will be lower so there is a gap between the pricing now because of this gap we are going for such disproportionate promises we are falling for such disproportionate uh, promises so that there can be a better return to us okay ultimately we fall into the trap of fraud but that is the intention okay now uh, when we are talking about uh, these particular things i have given you a crux of this article because since economic articles are kind of uh, 
you know difficult to understand so i have given the crux if you want you can go through it otherwise i can read it for you electric trading platforms are electronic systems where transaction occurs in eligible instruments like securities money market instrument foreign exchange instrument and derivatives okay so basically they are talking about your money market securities forex and your other derivatives okay so in if a platform or electronic platform which is dealing with in all these things these are basically your ETPs okay now these platforms operate independently of recognized stock exchange and lack proper authorization from the regulatory body okay now concern raised by RBI certain individuals or entities use uh, use banking channels to fund activities on these platforms RBI emphasized the need for enhanced vigilance by the banks to uh, prevent illegal or you can say such fraud like activities okay now there is certain uh, cautionary measure which RBI has taken as I told you RBI in 2018 has come up with a framework to authorize these ETPs okay they have introduced a framework to authorize ETPs for the financial market instrument now misleading advertisement of unauthorized ETPs offering forex trading facilities to Indian resident have been observed okay as I told you these misleading advertisements are there on the social media okay and then your search engines like Google okay google yahoo so you must have seen that when you are searching for certain things there are some side boxes wherein some ad advertisements are going on so basically they are talking about this particular thing okay <clears throat> and then there are uh, certain ott platforms as well okay wherein you will be watching a particular video and then there will be an ad in, uh, in between so such things are basically they are talking about so there are chances of misleading advertisements okay now these platforms are enticing people with the promising uh, promises of the uh, disproportionate returns the public is cautioned against the undertaking forex transaction on unauthorized etps or uh, depositing money for such transactions okay so these are the cautionary measures there are certain things like alert list as i told you rbi maintains a alert list on which there are names of names of entities platforms and the website endorsing unlicensed organizations okay they are uh, they are added recently 19 of such has been added and now list is of total 75 such uh, entities okay now transparency and pricing transparency in the pricing with the forex market remains a work in process uh, progress the retail customers experience need uh, needs improvement to align with the large customers as i told you when we are talking about the small customers and the large customers there is a gap in the pricing so we are trying to bridge that particular gap the solution is to bridge that particular gap so that a person would not fall for such disproportionate returns okay i hope this is clear we can move forward with the next article now okay dual emergence of cicadas okay when we are talking about this particular species here you can see in this particular picture these are some kind of flies okay so uh, this uh, this is a picture of an adult cicadas fly from a clover flower uh, clover flower in washington okay so recently what is happening is that these basically cicadas are getting out of the soil okay so this emergence uh, we are talking about this particular thing because they are for a periodical periodical cicadas okay so in the, for the first time since 1803 two broods of the periodical cicadas will emerge in the united states in summer so basically it happens uh, on the regular basis and uh, when we are talking about this periodical cicadas they come in a small quantity generally a small number you can say small number in uh, in general but this time there are two broods of such cicadas which are coming out at the same time from two different regions okay and they are in the large quantity this time or large number this time and that is why it becomes important okay now in a rare occurrence one trillion cicadas from two different broods are expected to begin appearing in the midwest and the southeast region of united states okay so this is basically in usa the event is happening in usa now it is it is first time since 1803 the brood uh, <coughs> brood 19 or the uh, great southern brood or there is this brood 13 or the northern illinois brood they are appearing together that is why it is called a dual emergence now all these things are of no importance for our exam point of view only thing which is important is that what is cicadas okay so here we can see uh, when we are talking about this species these are basically you can say a uh, uh, species or which is getting out of the soil okay and these are benefited uh, beneficial for the soil as, as well okay now when these cicadas are coming out so first cicadas is expected to start from the late april okay 
so april may is the area uh, is the time uh, where they will come out now what is the requirement for these cicadas to come out there is the requirement of a temperature particular temperature of that is nearly 17 degrees celsius so obviously when we are talking about india or countries like uh, which are top tropics in nature you might not find such cicadas over there okay because uh, they require this temperature that is of 17 degrees celsius okay now they are expected to come out in late april uh, soil needs to reach 17.78 degree celsius about 6 inches deep and then you can get a uh, you can uh, there will be a, some kind of rain soaking rain would be there and in that particular rain they will really pop up okay so basically these are two requirements one is temperature and after that particular temperature 17.78 uh, degree celsius and then there should be a rain okay after these two combinations they will start popping out of the soil how long will the dual emergence last so basically when we are talking about this particular you know lifespan of this particular uh, species that is about a month okay so when we are talking about this uh, particular brood they are coming uh, or the dual emergence when we are talking about that will last around uh, 4 to 6 weeks okay because the life uh, life cycle of this particular species is around 6 uh, sorry uh, one month that is basically your 4 weeks okay now the cicadas which live about a month which live about a month will die not far from the from where they have emerged okay because since they are living only for the one uh, one month so they will not fly you know very far second thing is that their flying capacity is not very good flying capacity is not very good okay because their peri you can see their vision is uh, obstructed because they have eyes on the sides okay so the straight vision is not very clear so because of that what happens is that most of the time you will see that they will actually uh, you know end up on the streets on the sidewalks etc and they get squeezed by the people walking over there okay so that is one thing about them are uh, cicadas dangerous as i told you they are not dangerous they cannot even fly second thing is they don't bite okay they do not have any kind of you know uh, disease carrying pathogens etc okay so that is why they are not very uh, you know uh, dangerous uh, per se they are not great flyers and even worse landers okay they end up on the sidewalks uh, and the city street squeezed by the people or the cars okay now how do you get rid of these cicadas okay so you don't get rid of these cicadas because these are not harmful first of all second thing is that is very important for our ecosystem or you can say when we are talking about the soil okay now these cicadas are basically you know plant eating uh, you can say worms uh, so basically if you want to prevent a plant you have to put a net on that okay that is one thing other than that uh, when we are talking about the cicadas what will they do is that they will eat on certain particular plant so basically uh, that would ultimately help the plant how we will see so uh, you don't actually get rid of this because delicate plants that you want to protect you use a special kind of netting for created for the purpose now bugs are beneficial for the environment the natural tree gardeners okay now when we are talking about the gardening so we go for a particular shape of a plant okay we try to make sure that a plant will be in a good shape okay now these cicadas are basically doing that job for us okay they will eat up the plant in a certain way okay uh, they are uh, called as natural tree gardeners now this thing please remember okay upsc might ask you this thing what is like how cicadas are uh, you can say beneficial okay so they they holds the leaf behind when they emerge from the ground okay they irritate the soil and allow rain water to get inside okay so what is happening here is that when then here you can see that is your ground and then they will emerge from the ground as i told you they will emerge from the soil okay so once it is emerging from the soil there will be a hole over there okay now this hole is basically helping soil aerated okay so you can say the air circulation inside the soil would be good because of this particular activity okay so that is one thing second thing is that since there is a hole and now whenever there is a rain now that hole will be used for the ground water table recharge so that is another benefit of these cicadas okay now uh, they allow for the rain water to get under uh, underground and nourish the tree roots in hot summer months okay so there are two things one they will allow the percolation of the rain water so that can you know recharge the ground water table other than that if not the ground water table at least they will give this water to the roots in the summer months okay because we are talking about april now they slit their uh, may, uh, they uh, actually slit the uh, trees okay when we are talking about these cicadas what happens is that if there is a leaf so they will start eating it in a way that it will slit them okay 
so they will put a slit on the leaves and cause some branches to break okay so leaves they turn brown in the process are called flagging okay so basically what happens is that since they are uh, making these slits over there and in time these leaves becomes brown okay this process is called flagging and that leaves or that particular area might you know get detached from that particular tree okay so in the process uh, called as flagging which is a kind of natural pruning pruning means that to removing uh, you know certain unwanted branches etc so ultimately they are doing it for you they will remove these branches or they will actually after this flagging uh, or you can say this uh, you know slitting what will happen is that this particular leaves they will actually uh, break away from the plant so ultimately this is a process of pruning you can go and uh, see what is this process of pruning when we are talking about uh, okay fine i have written it here pruning is the practice involved in the selective removal of certain part of the plants such as branches buds or roots okay so basically what is happening that that is selective removal of the certain plant uh, certain uh, part of the plants okay so ultimately these leaves which are not required in that particular plant that will be uh, pruned off okay so that that is basically the uh, you know idea of pruning okay when the branch grows again the fruit it yields will tend to be larger when they die okay fine so this is the last part before that when this particular pruning happens okay the part which has fall off from that particular area and when this particular part part is reemerging or regrowing over there then whatever fruit that particular part will bear that will have a larger you can say yield or you can say the size of that particular fruit will be better okay so that is how they benefit the plant okay now when they are dying when they die so obviously that they will decompose they will be decomposed by the you know uh, you know other microorganisms so ultimately that will act as nutrients okay so that is about your cicadas cicadas are uh, you know uh, some kind of species or you can say uh, organisms which are generating out of the soil they will come out of the soil they will put over a hole and these holes are basically help in soil get uh, irritated again and when we are talking about these holes they are also help in the percolation of water inside the uh, you know you can say soil ultimately touching the roots of the plants or you can say for the ground water recharge as well okay now these are two benefits when they are dying then they will be converted into or they will be decomposed by the microorganisms and they will provide nutrients for the other plants okay other than that they are also beneficial for the plants they are eating or ultimately these plants will go for the pruning and after the pruning there will be uh, you know emergence of a new fruit which will be quite uh, you know relatively larger in size so that you can say that their yield will be better okay so i hope this is clear recently this dual emergence is happening in usa okay so i hope this is clear now we can move forward with the next article okay now zaporizhia zaporizhia okay so basically this is particular nuclear plant okay i hope this is not visible i'll write it again zaporizhia okay so this is the nuclear power plant which is in ukraine okay now why we are discussing this is that uh, if you want to go and read this article you can otherwise i will discuss the important factors of this particular article whenever there is a nuclear plant okay hold on okay so whenever there is a nuclear plant obviously there are certain threats which are there okay so you know that uh this uh, nuclear plants they are using this uh, radioactive material that is one thing so if anything any leakage is there okay you must have heard about this particular incident that is uh, fukushima fukushima in japan okay so that happened in 2011 so what happened over there was that there was this earthquake okay now when we are going for the uh, uh, there was this earthquake and afterward there was this tsunami and ultimately there was a leak of radioactive element over there okay whenever we are making these nuclear power plants so what is happening is that we are trying to make sure certain layer of protections are there we make it uh, through uh, some kind of building material which is uh, you can say impact resistance okay so now if there is an earthquake so we will make sure that up to you know magnitude of 8 that uh, particular shock can be absorbed by that particular building 
okay so ultimately because of the earthquake there won't be any kind of leakage because that can resist that impact okay now when we are talking about this fukushima what happened over there in 2018 that th there was this earthquake of nearly 9.5 magnitude okay or 8.5 magnitude i don't remember but that was certainly more than the capacity of that particular uh, you can say uh, you know enclosures of the uh, nuclear plant so basically because of that particular impact uh, that uh, though the impact was more than the particular you can say the capacity but that plant actually taken the shock and that has been dispersed so because of the earthquake there was no such damage over there okay so whenever the civil engineers are going for the design if let's say there is a you know a strength which has been given that you have to uh, resist a shock of earthquake of 8.5 magnitude uh, so they will go for a buffer over there and because of that particular buffer only we can say that they are able to take this shock uh, of the earthquake in Fukushima in 2011. But because of earthquakes you know that whenever there is earthquake in the seabed okay there will be a generation of tsunami over there. Now after that earthquake there happens a tsunami and the tsunami uh, lead water to the coastal areas and because of that particular water there was a flooding, flooding like situation and that water entered inside the plant okay. Now, since there was flooding, water entered inside the plant that has come up with the contact of the radioactive element and ultimately because of this water inside the plant and then water get out of the plant because of which there was a leakage of the radioactive materials, okay. Or you can say radioactive elements over there and there are certain, uh, you can say properties which has been, uh, you know, leaking outside that particular thing. Now, that was the thing which has happened in the Fukushima. Now, when we are talking about a facility which has the impact bearing capacity of 8.5 and then they have, uh, you know, actually resist the impact of 9 magnitude, okay, and still because of the flood there was this, uh, you know, particular uh, mishap which has happened in the Fukushima, okay. Now, this particular plant is in area which is a war tone area right now that is in Ukraine, okay. Here you can see this is a map, the map, this is Ukraine and here somewhere we have this Zapurihesia, okay. So basically when we are talking about this Zapurihesia plant, so this is there and recently there was a drone attack on this particular facility and uh, we don't know who has done it because Russia is saying that Ukrainians has done it but the thing is uh, we don't know, okay. So ultimately there is this uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, okay. They have said that there should not be such incidences because that is a potential danger okay if something happens to that particular facility so the you can say consequences would be you know very catastrophic so ultimately that is the uh, you know whole idea about this particular article now uh, with the impact as i told you these buildings are having this uh, you know property that they can resist the shock so when there was this drone attack or missile attack because of which there was this impact and then this building has you know taken that particular impact that was not the problem okay but because of these uh, drone attacks and uh, you know war like situation in that particular area what is happening that there are power cuts now when we are talking about a nuclear power plant there are certain things wherein you requ require a coolant okay Otherwise, the temperature inside the plant will not be able to, you know, uh, you know, survive that particular plant because ultimately because of the high temperature, there can be a possibility of melting inside the plant, okay. So, ultimately at that point what happens is that because of this power cut, the supply of the coolant was resisted, okay. Now, uh, when we are talking about this particular uh, Fukushima, uh, there was one more thing I would like to tell you here is that when water uh, water entered inside the plant what has happened is that there was this power cut okay because of the uh, automated uh, reasons or because of the tsunami there was this power cut and because of the power cut what happens is that inside the Fukushima uh, this coolant coolant was not working because uh, for that circulation of the coolant let's say there is this particular uh, radioactive material or you can say this plant and side there would be a coolant okay mostly this coolant is generally water okay or D2O you must have heard about it D2O now this coolant is there and this coolant is circulating again and again so that they can absorb the temperature and they can uh, you know uh, move out of that particular zone and then there will be another coolant over there okay so that circulation is mostly uh, you can say uh, cyclic in nature and it will hap keep happening now because of the water which has entered or because of the tsunami there was this power cuts and because of the power cuts this circulation was hindered and this circulation stopped 
and that particular facility actually started melting because of the high temperature okay such things can happen to this particular zaporizhia uh, okay so basically what right now this uh, international atomic energy agency is saying that since they have been able to uh, absorb the shock but the thing is because of these power cuts over there because of the uh, war situations there are power cuts and because of the power cuts if the supply of the coolant is stopped or you can say uh, this particular you know uh, process is stopped wherein this coolant is not entering inside the nuclear plant ultimately that will lead to a collapse of that nuclear power plant okay now you can go through this particular thing but i would suggest that you don't have to remember the working of nuclear power plant etc okay that is just for the story i have tell you i have uh, told you but the thing is you what you have to remember is that there is the nuclear power plant which is there in this particular area which is of ukraine and this is a war zone area right now okay so that is your zaporizhia okay so please remember that second thing please remember fukushima 2011 that is also a tragedy which has happened okay so we have talked about this what is the issue here okay a strong but vulnerable as i told you they are shock resistant they can take the imp impact but the thing is vulnerable because of the power supplies okay if there is a power cut then ultimately that will lead to a supply you know obstruction in the supply of the coolant okay now uh, coating avoidable disaster now when we are talking about fukushima that was unavoidable because earthquake you cannot stop tsunami you cannot stop but when we are talking about this particular situation that is because of the wars okay that you can stop now you can actually what you can do is the entire world right now what they are trying to do is that they are only suggesting some measures they are not taking any uh, active step regarding this particular war of ukraine and russia okay but again if you are able to stop this war there are chances that such incidents can be avoided okay now we can move further here i have taken the liberty to put this map over here because uh, uh, you know because obviously this news which are uh, in the uh, uh, you know discourse which are related to your maps becomes even more important because there are high chances that upsc might ask you certain things about the island certain things about the bordering area etc when you are talking about russia and ukraine you know that this particular sea that is your black sea that becomes even more important okay now this area is basically your crimea okay so now you know that in 2014 russia has gone for the annexation of the crimea now crimea is part of russia as of now they have annexed it okay so 2014 that has happened so this particular part becomes important okay now when we are talking about the recent incident of this drone attack which we have zapuri hezia this is the area okay there is this river okay i would want you to name this river that is your homework what is this particular river over here which is you know flowing through the ukraine and ultimately going inside the black sea okay now they can ask you about the bordering countries of black sea so here you can see they uh, see we have russia then we have georgia then we have turkey then we have bulgaria romania and ukraine please remember that greece has no boundary greece is still here only this is basically your turkey okay istanbul you must have heard okay so this is uh, strait of bosphorus and so please remember this areas okay so this is black sea and the boundaries are bulgaria romania ukraine russia georgia and turkey so i hope this is clear second thing this is crimea so please remember this part as well now there is this uh, particular strait okay so this area here russia and crimea there is this kerch strait okay i will show you in the next map over here i guess okay so this is russia this is your crimea which has been annexed by russia in 2014 and here you can say this is this kerch strait okay so and there is this bridge that is kerch strait bridge okay so please remember this kerch strait as well because this russia ukraine crimea has been in news okay so i hope this is clear now we can move forward with the next uh, article that is related to us china trade fight okay so let's see <clears throat> so there is this question i am a student of class 11 uh but they want to prepare for a csc examination so the stis uh, will be coming up with this particular uh, you can say initiative that is is junior so you can go through that particular thing you can uh, browse that okay <coughs> now what is behind the latest us china trade fight <coughs> so china's 
electric cars and other green technologies which are there and there is this flash point in a new us china trade fight okay so when we are talking about this particular us china trade fight recently so what is happening is that there are certain electric cars you know that recently electrical vehicles etc are in use Se second thing is there are solar power uh, panels these are in use and every country is trying to go for the manufacture of these particular uh, things okay there are emerging technologies other than that as well so in that particular things now every country wants to have their own uh, scope or their own uh, advantage but when we are talking about china recently uh, biden has come up with uh, uh, certain industrial uh, you can say uh, uh, policies wherein they have said that they are going for uh, su some support to building of these electrical vehicles then these solar panels etc so ultimately uh, these solar panels or electric vehicles they are trying to boost their domestic uh, you know you can say production when we are talking about china what china is doing is that china is going for the over production domestically and when we are talking about china recently you must have that, uh, seen that china is going through a slowdown wherein there is the you can say lack of demand domestically since there is a domestic lack of demand they are trying to explore the international market so ultimately they are trying to go for the exports okay china has this tendency to go for cheap exports okay now usa is worried about these cheap exports because china is going for a you can say unregulated uh, production okay they are going for the over production of certain things the among which electric uh, vehicles and these solar panels are basically cause of worry okay china has sharply ramped up the production china has sharply ramped up the production of cheap electrical vehicles solar panels batteries just as the biden administration has pushed through the legislation supporting many uh, of uh, those some industries in the united states as i told you as biden has come up with the legislation to support these particular industry china is going for the production because no china is know that knowing that usa is going for such production because there is a demand for such productions okay so now they are also building it and they are trying to flood the market with the cheap export now problem is that usa can put a duty usa can put a duty of nearly 25 percent right now when we are talking about there is the 25 percent duty on the electric cars you know coming from the china but the thing is usa has a free trade agreement with mexico with mexico they have a free trade agreement now china can send these cars to mexico and from mexico that can be imported so now that is the problem for usa through mexico way this particular items can flood usa market okay so that is one particular uh, you can say concern which is raised in usa now concern are growing not just in the usa but also in the europe and mexico that china will uh, seek to bolster its own struggling economy with a wave of export that could undercut the factory overseas okay so basically they are saying that china will go for such things so that they can uh, you know uh, boost their economy and they can undercut the factories which are you know uh, trying to generate such things in overseas like in usa mexico or europe okay china's auto industry poses a existential threat to usa's car makers okay now trump uh, charged China would seek the, to export the cars into the USA through Mexico. As I told you, there is 25% duty or tariff on uh, you know China's products uh, when he, they are coming to USA. But with the Mexico route, because they have a free trade agreement, USA has a free trade agreement with Mexico. Now, what is the threat? As I already tell, told you, because of the decades of subsidying uh, which China has given to the industry, and recently there is a you know uh, you can say slump in the demand in China. Now the, the production or you can say the things which has been produced in China, they are trying to look for the market out outside china and ultimately they will go for the cheap export that is basically the threat okay now <clears throat> the concern is that the china are building up a lot of the capacity in the many industries including these new technology sectors if domestic demand does not pick up they will be looking forward for the or looking for the market outside the countries okay is it different from the trade fight which has happened previously so in 2017 also there has been this particular fight but this was pretty similar because uh, obviously the content has changed okay but the nature is the same china is going for the cheap uh, dumping or you can say cheap cheap exports okay at that point of time the issue was related to your aluminium and steel this time this is related to your electrical vehicles and your uh, solar panels it is important that this does not happen again china world's largest producer of solar cells okay so since it is largest producer of solar cells so this will pose a threat to usa's economy now steel and aluminium imports surged into the united states roughly a decade ago and government supported uh, 
uh, and China's government has supported that after 2008-9 financial crisis. So, in 2008-9 there was this financial crisis and after that China's government has supported the production of steel and aluminium and ultimately because of that particular support, okay, the subsidies which are given by the uh, Chinese government, the price of steel and aluminium was lesser when we are talking about the Chinese export and that is how they have flooded the USA market at that point of time. Okay? Now, USA also subsidized such industries, yes, of course, they subsidize every country will subsidize the recent or you can say the coming technology when we are talking about India, we have this production linked incentives schemes okay so every country will go for such things what is what next so two sides has gone for the talk they are saying that we will go for the talk but there is no outcome uh, china is saying that uh, they are not going for such things only the uh, you can say objective behind going for the cheaper export is that they are trying to fight climate change okay so that is how china talks so ultimately uh, we have seen this particular article now we can move further for the next article or you can say for your own read there is this article citizens climate rights so ultimately we have talked about this particular thing yesterday that supreme court has said that a right against the effects of the climate change is a fundamental right under article 21 okay so please go through this particular article because we have already uh, talked about it okay so this particular judgment or you can say this observation was given in particular uh, you, know, you can say case which was related to great Indian mustard and we have discussed that particular case as well. Okay? So, when we are talking about this uh, power lines which are going through Rajasthan and there is a population of great Indian mustard which is encountering with these power lines and they are dying because of which the uh, certain environmentalist sector they have approached the Supreme Court and there are certain things going on with that regard. The Supreme Court has said that they will be you know uh, commit, uh, cons uh, compositing a particular panel or you can say they will be coming up with a panel which will advise on the uh, issue right now. Okay? In that particular case, they have observed that Article 21 as, uh, and Article 40, Article 40 and Article 21, they have made a commentary on that with respect to right against effects of climate change and they have said that right against effect of climate change is a fundamental right under Article 21. Okay? Now, however, uh, how have the co uh, court has interpreted Article 21 earlier? As I told you in that particular session as well, that there are uh, certain rights which has been provided by the court under article 21 that is right to have a clean water right to have a clean air right to health okay right to livelihood all these things are basically undertaken uh, under uh, the scope of umbrella of article 21 here you can see the article 21 is the heart of the fundamental rights in the constitution right to life is not just mere existence but that includes all rights that make it meaningful and dignified existence of for the all individuals okay so, here they are saying that right to life is not about mere existence, it is about the dignified life. Okay? Then, when we are talking about this, uh, in 1980, they have come up with the right to clean environment as part of Article 21, right to education and then right to shelter, right to clean air, right to livelihood and right to medical care. These are certain rights which has been, uh, you know, uh, included in under the umbrella of Article 21. No doubt these are not all rights can be, you know, uh, uh, you can say, you can ask for this right, uh, right away because obviously state has some kind of uh, restrictions, fund related restrictions, okay. But per se, Supreme Court has said that these are rights which are under Article 21, okay. Now we can move further. Then there is the second uh, article for your read that is related to your VVPATs, okay. So that is voter verified paper audit trial. So basically when we are talking about VVPATs, recently there is this demand that opposition is saying that go for the 100% verification of VVPATs. Now uh, what is the issue behind it, why they are going for the you know such things that 100% verification etc. So we have already discussed all these things and otherwise also there is this uh, particular article which has been discussed in our uh, you know different series that is either in, in news or in focus. Okay. So, you can go through that particular thing if you want to know more about it. Otherwise, I have discussed the same issue in uh, our previous lectures as well. Okay? Now, if you do not have time or if you do not want to go through such trouble, you can just read these two paragraphs okay? which is related to what is VVPAT machine and how does it work, why did the election commission introduce VVPAT okay? and how this uh, verification is done. Okay? So, they randomly take uh, uh, you know, five uh, constituencies and they actually verify over there. But again, uh, please go through these two particular articles. Okay?
Now, last part of the day that is related to your practice question. What fundamental rights are recognized recognized as the source of the right against adverse effect of climate change? Okay, options are Article 19, 22, Article 21, 14, Article 32 and 44, Article 11 and 17. So you can uh, you know attempt this particular question because we have already discussed. So attempt this question and answer in the comment box. With that, I would like to take your leave. I hope you are watching this target UPSC prelims 2024. That series is related to your current affair revision as well as MCQ practice series. So please go through it. You can watch it uh, and boost your prelims preparation. With that, thank you. Have a good day.